Hey guys, this video won't help you get out of the doghouse when you come home with a new welder, but I will pass on some of the tips and tricks of stuff I've learned that I've picked up along the way from welding. So I'm going to talk about just the basics of flux core welding. There are a lot of welding videos out there and the one thing that I have that they don't is, well, a cheap as all get out machine. Don't get me wrong, those videos all have real good content and you should watch them. Just don't get discouraged when you think you have to buy an expensive machine to throw down a decent weld. I've put out a lot of other welder videos uh, that go into specifications of different types of welders, so watch those and maybe you'll see which one you want to pick up. But really, if it were up to me, I'd actually pick up the new Titanium 125. It's a sweet little welder. Check out the link above. This welder is the Harbor Freight 125 or 90, depending on which, uh, which model you pick up. You can buy all of this stuff and welders online, eBay, Amazon. You can even go into Home Depot and get it. But if you want to go bare bones cheap, put $200 in your pocket and head on over to Harbor Freight. Just remember, the only thing they don't carry is nozzle gel. And uh, always remember the number one rule of Harbor Freight, don't go without a coupon. Kind of reminds me of my next point. We need to talk about the sponsors for this video. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I don't have any sponsors. Okay, not to get all safety on you, but we do need to uh, cover a couple things. You're, you're freaking melting two pieces of metal together, so it gets extremely hot. So go pick up a three pack for 10 bucks of welding gloves, and then uh, you want to protect your eyes. Yeah, well, the uh, 125 comes with this cheap mask. Some of the other uh, welders come with cheap ones too, but uh, just throw these away. They're not even worth it. Um, you might see goggles. And uh, goggles work great. They're more for uh, torches and for a settling, uh, settling torch kind of stuff. Will it work in a pinch? Yeah. But uh, pick yourself up a auto darkening helmet. Uh, they have just a, their basic model. I think it's like 40 bucks. Use your 20% off coupon or wait till it goes on sale for I think around 35 bucks. Trust me on that. You want to be able to see your weld and what you're doing with that little mask it's it's really hard because you can't see anything until you start welding so you may be way far back and you don't even know it till you start the arc some of these other things aren't absolutely necessary but they help and save out time so i'll let you pick and choose what you want for example well unless you uh magically have the exact thickness and size of metal you want to weld yeah well you're going to want to cut it so you can use the old-fashioned hacksaw Or save a year and a half of your life and pick up a $10 angle, angle grinder with a pack of uh, cutoff wheels. I have two of them for the sole purpose of not having to switch these heads out. This is a wire wheel. Um, same thing as this, just on steroids. Really, there's kind of twofold for this. Uh, first, you're going to want to clean your metal. So when you get it, sometimes it will have some rust on it. Um, quick uh, pass of that cleans that right up you want it to look nice and shiny and clean and that's so then you get a good connection and so that you're welding straight to the material you want and not going through rust and all kinds of stuff welding pliers are nice but you know what a pair of regular pliers and uh, cutters will work just great but what I would consider an absolute must is nozzle gel. I've kind of mentioned it quite a bit in my other videos and some people called me out on, well, how do you actually use it? Well, let's talk about the purpose. The purpose is it's kind of a lubricant. When you're flux core welding, you'll notice there's a lot of spatter and gunk that just flies off and smoke. Well, that tends to ball up on the end of your tip and when you get so much on there, well, the wire can't come out and it gets stuck. So you're sitting there with your pliers trying to pull it off, knock that stuff off. Well, you dip the tip in the wire uh, gel, it's wire gel, the nozzle gel every once in a while, and it puts a nice little lubricated coating over that. So anything that collects on there, a quick, a quick little pass with the wire brush and it's clean, you won't be changing out your tip so often. Magnets and clamps. You know what? They're not that much money, so go pick up a couple. The great thing though about magnets is you'll notice that these have some nice angles. You know, thus a 90 degree angle. 
if you know your piece that it needs to be at a 90 well voila you've got a great angle everything's held in place for you okay guys here's some very common welding joints that you'll be doing i think i'm actually going to be doing that at a 90 um, just to give you a couple different variations you know we get a very simple 90 degree fillet angle this is just a straight butt joint i'm not quite sure if it really is a butt joint since that's beveled right there i don't know maybe a beveled but who knows who cares about names right we just want to make sure it sticks so just think of these couple things and you'll be golden okay well first of all you want to not go too fast and you don't want to go too slow okay uh yeah there's a bunch of other videos on you know how many feet per inch you should uh your wire speed should be and how fast you should go guys i'm gonna tell you go through a couple spools of wire and you'll learn for yourself what's the right speed and what's not it's really all about practice okay yeah you can be taught all the you know special settings and what to do but really unless you get out there and start welding it ain't gonna happen for you so what i do want to show you though is right here the placement of the tip it's very important okay first of all the best thing is to go at about 90 and then clock it back just slightly 10 10 degrees or so i don't know i'm just throwing that out i'm not measuring so what you're going to do is go back at an angle and you're going to drag it or pull it as they'll say technically flex core you should only pull or drag mig you can do either one but uh so anyway you're going to go and you're going to drag it the angle you want second thing you don't want to be too far away and you don't want to be too close if you're too close then your tip's going to hit the metal and then it'll arc out and yeah cause you grief so do that and then your speed you know you don't want to go too fast too slow i may have already mentioned that either way just think of those 18 things while you're welding and hey your weld will turn out just great so like i said we'll start out we'll do a We'll do that in the lovely 90 because square tubing is a pretty common shape. So that 90, you know, built my entire go-kart out of it and it turned out okay. Not the first one I did though. That's another side story. So I talked about the angle on this guy, but for a 90, just keep in mind, you'll want to go straight right into the middle and back again, remember? So that angle is going to be right there in the smack dab middle and then you're going to angle it back again and pull it back. Also, take note of my arm. I'm going to be using my arm to help me out. Trust me, you can sit there and try to do this freehand, but really, why? You've got a second arm. You've got your magnets and your clamps holding everything down. Just try it and see which one turns out better for you, either freehanding it or using your arm for stability. Well, guys, I think that's plenty to learn for right now. Let's actually throw down some of these welds and see what we can learn from it. Since this is 3 16th, I've got my welder setting at the, um, at the suggested setting under the hood, which is a 9 and max. Well guys, there's proof that yes, you do need a 20 amp breaker. Some of you first-time flux core welders may look at that and go, that's a pretty sh** weld. 
but uh, you'll see that a quick pass with the with the wire wheel cleans it right up. Um, all those little balls and smoke, you know, that's that's the spatter I was talking about, and that is 100% normal for your flux core weld. Well, I don't want to bore you guys with uh, a whole bunch of weld talk. I just wanted to show you some of the pieces, the final pieces, and tell you, yeah, it does take a lot of practice. Um, you'll be going through a lot of spools of wire before you can, you know, throw out a decent weld. I wanted to practice and see if I can do this entire pass with one, um, you know, this entire bead with one pass. And, well, as you saw in the video, it uh, my breaker tripped a couple times. So keep that in mind. If you want to use the higher settings, you'll need the 20 amp breaker. Something I've done that I didn't show in the video is many times I'll just grab a piece of metal and I'll just start laying down the weld. You'll soon realize the things that uh, to look for. You know, for example, I can see right offhand that this guy was going way too fast. So a couple little tips and tricks you'll be picking up along the way to help your welds uh, get better and better. Hope you like the video, and well, leave a comment on something you want to see next. We'll see you next time.